the first piece of business. Um, normally we would move guests to the top of the agenda, but um, we actually need to vote on the reorganization of the board as our first order of business. So we're going to handle that and then we'll handle next agenda items, including guests. And I'm just going to jump over to my agenda. So we need to call, how do we call the vote for the reorganization of the board, Ms. Mallory? Um, so I guess you, first you would just kind of discuss it, whoever wants to be chair um, and vice chair. I think Bill was last, last time, mm -hmm. um, members of the board are just considered members. Um, so usually if someone wants to volunteer, if there wants to be some discussion, and then once it's kind of decided on, we make a motion and we vote on it. All right. Anyone volunteering? Kathy, you're currently chair. Anybody else want the role? What's the, how does this work? Jump on in. Oh, well, I'll do it for one more year if nobody else volunteers. Hi, Vin. Hey, there you are. Can you hear me? Come in, Rangoon. Come in, Rangoon. <laughs> All right, and do we do we still want a vice chair position for the board in oh. terms of? In the previous years, the vice chair, which was Bill, um, ran uh, the meetings, um, and I think it's a good thing. It's I think it's required to have a vice chair so that if something happens to me, someone else is automatically consulted for certain things that happen. Um, or if there was an emergency or whatever. Okay. I nominate Kate to be vice chair. She's good at this tech stuff. Does a good job running the meetings and getting us done efficiently. Second the motion. Oh, come on. I can't you know, <laughs> take it. Oh, my God. All right. Yep. I'm gonna have to learn how to run these meetings better. Run them great. Okay, I have a couple of rule books. If you want, I can get them over here. That helps. Perfect. All right. So I make a motion that we uh, vote to have, um, I'll continue as chair if no one else wants the position. And then we should vote to uh, accept Kate as the vice chair. I'll move Kathy Hansgate as chairman of the Board of Health and Kate Saab as vice chair of the Board of Health. Second. Ali. Your vote. You're on mute, Kelly. Okay, so I don't see any videos anymore here. It could just be a delay. It's, I think it's fine if we're not looking at each other. Well, no, I, I'm, in, I'm in something that says your meeting should start in a few seconds. <laughs> well, you're on camera now. I don't know what happened here. Huh? Um, on the bottom, if you click the blue icon with the white camera on the bottom ribbon on your Chromebook, I think it'll bring back up the Zoom meeting window. I think you're looking at like the web waiting room window. Yeah. Colleen, at the bottom of your screen, if you went back to your home page, there should be an icon that looks like a camera. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah. I oh, there it is. That was weird. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right, so we need a vote. We have a, first, a, a motion and a second. Um, call the vote in order, Colleen. Aye. Kathy? Aye. Judy? Aye. Vin? Yes. Kate? Yes. Thanks, right. Kate. Reorged. Are there other meeting items that we have to move to the top or can we move? to our guest. 
We can, we can look at the gas. Okay. Claudia, you there? Oh, I am here. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, it's my turn, is it? <laughs> um, we were talking. I was talking with Ryan this morning, and um, we were talking, and he was suggesting that maybe in order to slowly start offering some activities to our seniors, that we could put a tent in maybe in back of the school. So we could start bringing some of the seniors out. They're starting to get a little depressed. They're having some problems. And uh, we thought that we, as long as we met protocol and we made sure that everything was, was properly done, that we might be able to start to do that temporarily. Um, maybe do some bingo, maybe do a little bit of the singing. The singers are anxious to get back to singing a little bit with face shields. Uh, maybe start some congregate meals as long as they were distanced apart. So um, that's why I'm here to talk to you about that. And that would be temporarily until we could probably put a deck on the back of the seniors, on the back of the Slade building so that we could have things outside because we don't know how long this is going to last. And this way, if they were outside and they could distance, we could have some programs outside. Um, Ryan got a, a grant from the CARE Act, so that would, that would pay for that debt. So I, I, this, I'm so new at this, I really don't know how to do this. But I mean, if you have any questions or if we can talk about this a little bit, it would be great. So what we're kind of looking at, it's Mallory, Claudia, um, what we're kind of looking at, um, I met with Claudia and Ryan this afternoon um, to kind of talk about it. So we have some seniors getting restless um, and we definitely need to do some something for them. Um, obviously we can't accommodate them inside of our building. Um, it's just not feasible with the size and all that good stuff. So Ryan's suggestion right now is um, the health is open to allowing us to erect like a party tent almost. Um, and we would have things like uh, cooling stations and all that inside the tent. We could start offering some of the safer services. Um, bingo with like disposable cards. Everyone brings their own dauber, um, the singers, the meals, um, all that good stuff. Then if the um, Board of Health is feeling open to that, we would take a look at going forth and getting some plan um, in place for doing a more permanent deck. Um, but Ryan doesn't want to go ahead and move forward with the deck if the Board of Health isn't even open to <laughs> So, Where would the deck go? It, it would go on the back of the Slade building, in the back. Around the back, the seniors have a ramp that goes up. Okay. And it's like a circular, yeah. So it would go in the roadway? Not in the road, no, we would stay on the, we would, are you talking now? Nope. Okay. Would, would that accommodate enough space for the amount of seniors that would be coming? So I think the deck right now, um, they're, it's in very preliminary stages. Ryan just got the grant for it and literally just told Claudia this morning um, about it. So what they're more concerned with right now is um, obviously everything would have to be zoned appropriately. It's going to have to go through Roland. Um, it's going to have to be done by a licensed contractor. So all that will be taken care of through the building department. Um, right now they're just looking at getting a tent up and moving. Um, which we also talked about if there's not the space to put the tent where we are now um, utilizing some other town properties for the tent. Uh, so they're just looking to get things moving. Claudia, would you be a amenable to maybe using the tents that the Rod and Gun Club put up outside? They're you very nice. The I saw them. They are very nice. Um, do you mean that we would go to the Rod and Gun Club instead of having it at the senior, uh, on the property by the senior center? Correct. Because it's actually a bigger space, isn't it, at the Rod and Gun Club? 
I haven't been there, so I don't know. I haven't looked at it. And how would we go about doing that? Would they? Would we? I would have to go there and see if they'd be willing to share that space. Right. They're already have an approved plan for being open um, three evenings a week. Um, so I'm wondering if uh, it would be easier for you to get started with something that's already set up. Well, that would mean that they would have a plan for disinfecting and all that stuff, but um, that's something that, you know, the senior centers, they were going to move temporarily to that space, they would have to adopt all of their policies and procedures for disinfecting and they would be responsible to do that. I know that, um, I don't know if any of you are on the Board of Health calls um, Tuesdays and Fridays. I know I usually listen in on Friday morning at 9 a.m. And the seniors are um, always, uh, there's always questions on when can seniors open up. And right now there still remains a reluctance. Um, I can, if you want to put together a, a question, I can put it before the folks that run the meeting on Friday morning and see what kind of answer I get. Well, would, would the, if they were going to use those tents, um, would they be bringing their own tables or would they be using tables that are already there and chairs and things like that that belong to the Rod and Gun Club? How would that, how would that all work? My question is, if they put a tent behind the senior center, what are we going to use? And how much space do we have there? Right. It's on a slope as well, on a pretty steep slope of that grassy well, they were, area. They were thinking of putting it behind the school. Now, in the back parking lot, if it's temporarily, just temporarily, in the back parking lot where the clothes places and our sheds for our telephone aging storage and stuff, in that area, um, that would probably work and the seniors would have a flat ground to walk on pretty much. Um, that okay. would work. And yeah, as far as the tables, yeah. yeah, and as far as the tables, I think we would rent the tables and chairs for now. And then of course we thought if it got real hot, we could even put fans in the tent. Um, that would cool them down so it wouldn't get too hot. Yeah, and we, we could probably even run the SHINE program from there because that's just one-on-one -on -one with the SHINE counselor. Um, I get a lot of calls for that, and Glenn's been very good about that, but sometimes it's better to do one-on-one -on -one to see that person and bring in their materials. So um, that was that's what we were thinking. I mean, we probably could even use the the rec field, I guess, if we had to. But well, having it closer to the senior center for getting materials that you want to use is certainly a good idea. I so that black parking area does sound like a reasonable place to have it. I think fans are going to be necessary to have adequate air circulation, whether it's hot or not. Um, I think you need to build that into your plan. And then also, again, just like if you were the Rod and Gun Club or Riata or anybody, you have to put forth your plan for how you're going to sanitize. Yep, we have it. We have. Um, we're working on a plan now. Um, one of the the ladies from the Friends, the president of the Friends, just got us another three thousand two hundred dollars to use for the reopening of the senior center with the hand sanitizers and um, the shield masks for the singers and products to sanitize all the tables and chairs when we're finished. 
and the thermometers to take everybody's temperature as they enter into the tent and stuff. So we're trying to be really aware of being very safe because it would be bad, awful if anyone got sick. So we're trying to keep it as clean and sanitized as possible. So, and we have masks to give out for anyone who comes in. We have masks. So um, we will put together a, a plan so it will be in writing so you can see that. That, that sounds like you're on the right track. We're trying. We're trying. I, I got a couple of comments, if I may. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say hello, Claudia. And Hi, how are you, Ben? I'm well, thank you. And secondly, I'd like to say hello to Judy and welcome her back to the board. And <laughs> Thirdly, I'd like to say as empathetic as I am towards the situation of all the seniors, uh, being one myself, I, I can't emphasize enough, however, the, the plan has to be even more secure or more tightened up than any other we've seen. The statistics are just staggering for people in their 60s and 70s, and I would hate to see something happen with any of the seniors in town. And although I realize the conscientiousness of the group, I just think it has to be probably even more conscientious than anything else we see. I, I, just, I just look at the, the statistics of uh, the people over 60 years old and it's, it's damn right dangerous. Yes, it but is. having said that, I certainly understand everybody's cabin fever. And you know, if we can do it safely, I'm all for it. Well, I certainly think that, you know, we are open to suggestions and any possible way that we can do, or if it's not, we're not doing something that you think would be better, absolutely open to any of those suggestions to make sure that everyone is safe, because that's our main concern right there, is making sure everybody's safe and making sure they do what they have to do to come into that tent. So, otherwise, they can't come in. If they refuse to wear a mask, if they refuse to do what we say, the guidelines we put out, then we can't let them come in. So, um, absolutely open to suggestions. Absolutely. I know. I agree. So, the plan, um, we've seen enough plans at this point that we could probably provide some kind of a template. Could we not, Mallory? I know, I know there is a template document I thought I saw online. On those yeah, yep, yep, that's the same one we've given everyone else. Yeah. I think that they're going to need a lot more than just that template though. Yeah, but it's a good starting off point at least to, to, to have the framework. Um, and then somebody to obviously sanitize bathrooms because if you're going to have activities and people doing things, there's always going to be a need for a restroom. Um, Claudia, has Ryan said anything about offering up jury services more than what he's already doing if this happens or? Offering what services now? I'm sorry. Like jury. It's okay. Right? For cleaning. Is he going to be around more often than not? Or is he going to, are you going to rely on yourselves or? We'll probably do a lot of cleaning ourselves because then we know sure it's done the way we want it to be done. And you know, we have a bathroom in the senior center. So if we are closer, if, we're, if we decide, if we can have it closer to the senior center, we have the bathroom in there and that's sanitized. So as long as we have just one person in and out and we sanitize after each person goes in and out, then um, you wouldn't want to, I don't think we'd want to put up a porta potty or anything like that. I don't, no, just a cleaning schedule for the public not. bathroom. And the other thing I'm going to note is, I don't know if you guys saw this, but I was watching the news this morning and they had a an activity that went viral for a bunch of seniors who took photographs mimicking famous photo albums. So one of the seniors did Adele and Adele's album where she's, it's 21 and she's she she's like posed like this and and then the woman I can't remember her name Agnes or something and she said Agnes 91 and it was a picture of her in the same pose so they as an activity picked all these album covers and then used craft materials to try to recreate the album cover with their own photographs and it went viral 
and because it went viral, they now are getting donations for people who want rights to the pictures or want to buy the pictures, and they're raising money for um, Alzheimer's. It was really cool. Oh, very nice. You might have looked that one up. It was on CBS this morning, and it was um, just a really neat way to do an activity that is in isolation, but can kind of then be shared. Any other so discussion? I, I think Kathy? that we can have Claudia um, work with Mallory and uh, Ryan to come up with a plan. I think that Judy could bring this up at your Friday call and see what the general view is, if it's totally um, not going to be allowed or if it's they have any ideas yet. Um, Judy, I haven't heard of any other senior centers opening, have you? Oh, nope. me either. They're, yeah. they're all talking about it down the road. Yeah, I think, yeah. CDC well, also has um, a huge amount of um, information and I just did self-certification plan for the church and I just pulled it off the of CDC and just created a checklist and it was um, quickly approved by the Board of Health and Gardner. So um, that's a resource that you might, might want to tap into for um, making sure you hit all the um, cross all the T's and dot all the I's. Yeah. Claudia, I'll get that out for us to look at with Ryan. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Mal. You're welcome. Are you all done with me now? <laughs> <laughs> Till next time. <laughs> Thank you, Claudia. All right, have a good day. Thank you very much. Thank good you. night. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Good night. All right. So next item is a vote of inspectors. So Mallory, it's just uh, Kate and I at this point for uh, food size, um, I've been doing inspect, uh, acting as an inspector for septic issues. Um, do we have any other categories we need help with right now? Well, I had a question on that because I was reading your, your notes from last month and um, I was, there was, there were said that, um, Completed installer at uh, 49 Hale we Review. Completed installer to contact Kathy for inspection. So I was wondering, are you doing final inspections and did you get some certifications or who else is doing it? And what did you have to do to, to um, did you have to pass something or, or take a, to, um, get your certification or are there any certifications at all needed to go in and inspect a septic system? I, I don't remember all the ins and outs of it, but. So I have not taken any specific courses. Um, and when I go to inspect, it is to act as a witness with photographs taken of the completion of a job um, according to the plan for that job. So you go with an engineer? Or... Uh, for the completion, sometimes yep. it's uh, just the um, excavator who finishes the grass area and so forth. Um, so I'm going in for the perk test, I'm going in for the bed bottom, I'm going in when the uh, system is put in place and photographs are taken at each stage. And then also at the completion, if it's uh, according to the plan that was submitted. 
and Matt reviews those plans. So he's our engineer that reviews all of that stuff. Um, I don't say that I have that qualification at all. I'm just a witness that um, they're following the plans. So Matt is signing them all off and then you're putting, and then you're down as the witness. My job the board is of to be the witness Correct. of the, uh, the work that's being done by the professionals. Because um, the way I was reading the notes and that, that wasn't all that clear. So that's why I questioned it as to whether you were actually doing the inspection or, or what. <laughs> No, I'm very honest with everyone that I am just uh, a Board of Health representative that is witnessing the work of the professionals that are actually doing the jobs. Yeah, at one point there was a class that was a, um, they were having Board of Health members go, go through. Are they still make, uh, have that class? I have not any way back. Mallory, are you aware of any classes? Um, just the ones I've mentioned before through New EPEC um, for your Title V inspector. Okay. And that, those classes are extremely hard to get into. They fill up super fast and unfortunately were canceled. I haven't gotten any notifications on any new ones coming out because I have um, signed up to be on their waiting list. Okay. All right, that's all I have. So are, they, are there any other inspections, inspectors needed? All right. So do we need a motion to vote on the inspectors as proposed? You guys usually vote on it? I don't know that we have. We have not in the past. However, it was one of the items that Ryan recommended uh, last, late last fall that we re-recognize re, uh, the inspectors each mm -hmm. annually. What, what do the regulations, do they say any Board of Health member or do they say a specific Board of Health member? Well, Ryan wanted us to make it um, very clear to the town who has, um, uh, who is on that list, which is on the website. And so, he, go ahead, Marilyn. Yeah, so Judy, um, when I first hopped onto the board, um, or not the board, as the admin for land use, um, there was some concern as of who was doing inspections that should and shouldn't be, and we had gotten some, um, I'm assuming some backlash or something that prompted Ryan to wanting to get some type of publication out on the website, um, not just for our department, for, for any department that goes out and does inspections, just telling people um, yes, this person works for the Board of Health, and this is why they are doing it, um, and here are their certifications. So. Yeah, I know that was a problem way back when, too, and they actually ended up giving us ID cards so that we yeah. could identify ourselves. Yeah, so that will be something eventually I'll have to set up for you to come and get one with the Chief of Police, because every board member has one, um, and he has a ability to do the photographing and make the cards for everyone. Um, but I asked him about it and he said that he's not doing it right this very second. Um, so as soon as we're back up and running, I'll let you know so we can get you an ID card. <laughs> All right, so it's... Um... I make a motion that uh, we continue with the current list of inspectors. I'll second it. And a second, so from the top, uh, Kathy? Yes. Colleen? Yes. Judy? 
Yeah, somebody wants to jump in the hole. I'm all for it. Go for it. <laughs> ben? Yes. Ben, Kate, is yes. All right. Next item on the agenda, the vote for the MPHN payment. Yeah, so that's for our public nurse. Um, so I think it was back in January when Ryan, we met with Ryan, um, he wanted the revolver to take over the payment of the public nurse um, and the services we use through MPHN, um, along with the landfill testing. So we just, and we decided that we would vote on it annually instead of just saying yes and having the um, money taken out of there every year. So, all right. So I make a motion that we um, pay from our revolving account, account the MPHN and for uh, this current budget year. Right, do you I'll get say. annual reports? Do you get regular monthly reports? We do. Yep. Okay. Are we I'm going to have to back out of that because I'm public health nurse for three other towns. So, and I do, this, <laughs> and I do what this this program that you're buying into. I already do that for other towns, so I'm backing out. I'm abstaining. Okay. Are we also including in that the payment for the inspection of the dump? I put that, that on a separate. Item? Item? That's a separate item on the agenda. Okay. All right. I'll second the motion. Call for vote. Kathy? Yes. Colleen? Yes. Judy abstained. And Jen? Yes. And Kate? Yes. All right. Motion passes. Next item on the agenda is vote on the 80 20 split of fees. That was for Ryan also on this to start contributing to the general fund. Um, so we voted 80% of our incoming fees that would normally go to our revolver would go to the general fund and 20% of the fees would continue to um, support the revolver for any services we may need to offer. And we also agreed that we we're going to vote on this annually. Okay. That give you enough funds for everything like hoarding situations and are there any other situations like that that might pop up? Yeah, so for uh, the past quite few, we couldn't figure out exactly when they stopped or started. 100% um, of the proceeds from the Board of Health um, took in for fees had been going into this revolver. Yeah, um, yeah. So there's quite a bit of money in there um, to cover any foreseeable things that we may have. Um, I can't remember the exact number that we have up there at the top of my head right now. I know some is reserved from a vaccine account that was um, closed last fiscal year. Um, but it I'm is not sure why you guys did that. But so we moved the money <clears throat> so that it could be more readily available uh, for vaccines and other emergencies. At the time, we didn't think of there would be a need for a COVID type thing, but the monies could be used for um, sanitizing equipment and such under COVID. Um, but we are planning on holding that money for when we will have to have uh, vaccine clinics whenever they get a COVID vaccine. It's almost $18,000. And we don't plan on spending it. But it does make it, when it's in the revolving account, it does make it more accessible on a quicker, shorter time frame. Mm -hmm. Any other questions or discussion? All right, hearing none, I'll take a motion on the acceptance of the 80 20 split of fees or any other arguments against. I make a motion that we uh, continue the 80 20 split for this current budget year. Do 
Do we have a second on the motion? I'll second it. All right. And a vote, uh, Kathy? Yes. Colleen? Yes. Judy? Yeah. Ben? Yes. And Kate? Yes. yes. All right. Sorry, I'm bouncing back and forth on windows. It takes me a minute. All right. Uh, we need to vote on the payment for landfill testing. And so hopefully this year we will get two tests run and then we can apply to the state to have the frequency of testing reduced because we are very close to the 30 year mark. So again, in the past, it, the landfill testing was paid under the Board of Health. I'm not, we, then we had an accountant a uh, year and a half ago who kind of messed up things and it did not get paid from the Board of Health. So we are reinstituting that. Um, we had voted on it earlier this year and now we need to vote on it as an annual thing. So what if we don't fund it? And we're not going to have DEP on you. Yeah. Because <laughs> I've been in on this since the beginning. Mm -hmm. DEP, Ben. Mm -hmm. Could we transfer it to a, a DCI payment? It's their land. It was our land fell. Yeah. It's our land fell. Under the state regs, that's not how it works. Fortunately. We did investigate that and, and talk about that in previous meetings um, when we started doing the multiple testing and pursuing this, you know, application for relief from the state. And it all falls under DEP and it's regardless, it was the town's landfill, the town's, you know, responsibility under the Board of Health for, regardless where the land actually lives today. Lives today. We never had a says that State law says that whoever we never owns had a bad one has a problem. So if you buy a piece of land that has hazardous waste on it, it's not the previous owner's problem, it's your problem. And we don't own that land. That's a DCI parcel. Why aren't they responsible for it? Well, we could take DCR to court over it, but I'm pretty sure we'd spend more money than we will in the next two payments of landfill testing. Well, just send them, just send them the invoice. See if they pay for it. I don't think that was the way it's set up. How no. to go? I sympathize, Vin, but uh, Judy's right. That's not how it was set up, and. At this point, it's not worth changing. We're very close to closing it out. All the tests have come back um, all really good all the time, right? They're still con continuing to come back? Correct. Um, negative for any problems? Correct. Okay. And can I ask, what's the amount? Because I don't recall off the top of my head what the the cost for the landfill testing was? Yearly, every time Mark goes out to test, it's about 4,500. Okay. Yeah, it's about 9,000 annually. Yeah. Yep. You know, we, we approached DCI once upon a time, not that long ago, for permission to install a solar farm on that landfill. And they said no. You know, they exercise their right of ownership on that. And I'm just curious as to why we, you know, we may have some agreement, but I've never seen any of those agreements. Maybe that's what we can request from, oh, maybe the town clerk has a copy of it. But I'd like to see what the deal is, and I'd like to see what and how long all of this is going to last, and why, in fact, we have to pay for it. You know, I think certainly they are more ability to pay for those types of things. They probably could even do it in house with their engineers. And this is a $9,000 expense. I don't think the Board of Health or the town should incur. I think that 
we should almost be done testing, but there was a period of time when the testing stopped. So it kind of put us back quite a few years. Um, so we're trying to play catch up right now to just kind of um, get it off our hands, but I don't foresee the DDP taking or DCR taking over any of it. I agree well, with you, maybe. terrible expense. And that's why I'm really pushing to have the second one done this year. And then we're going to get the paperwork in as soon as that second test is done uh, to reduce the testing to once every five years um, for the next 10 years so that there's only two tests. And then at that point, if those continue to be good, um, then the dump can this testing can be stopped completely. Well, perhaps we could ask Ryan to have the town council research this and come back with a report. You know, they may, going back the 30 some odd years and longer, there may not even be an agreement in place. There's I'd gotta like to be, see it anyway. There's gotta be some records kicking around the town somewhere. No, but Cause this, that, was a, that was a huge undertaking with four tests a year at the beginning and all kinds of stuff. Well, let's take a look at it. Let's review so it's got it. To, yeah, history's got to be around the town. I'm sorry, Judy? I said the history's got to be in, in some file cabinet in the town. Right, yeah, someplace, sure. Well, I, I, I'd make the motion to have Ryan request the town council to review the documentation and the history and see what exactly our obligation is. And if there's some way it could be deferred back to the owner of the land. Um, town council. All right, so I guess we need to table the vote for the payment of the landfill testing until the next meeting at the very least. Okay. So would somebody second my motion or? <laughs> For you, research? Did you catch it, Kate? I don't know if you heard me. I, I didn't. I stopped my video because I was breaking up and not hearing oh, Okay. I'm sorry. I move that we request Ryan to have town council research the documentation and the history on our obligation to pay for the town landfill oh, testing. Oh, to continually paying for it. All right. Anybody else want a second? I would like to pull up as much paperwork as we can find before we ask town council and pay them money to research further. Let's pull together our information first, then, and then um, so that the amount of time spent by town council is very limited. So let's work, uh, I'd like no, to have I, us work on I, pulling all the information all out for review. And then I'll let, let's have that motion at the next meeting after we have all of it together, okay? All right. Is that fair? Okay, I'll take that motion back then. But we'll definitely keep this on the agenda and pull out all the information that we have so that we can all review it. I agree. Okay, thanks everybody. All right, so the next item on the agenda, the review of the last meeting minutes from 6-25-2020. Did everybody have a chance to review those from the documentation sent via email? Yes, I did. Mm -hmm. Anyone else need a minute or two? Or? I, I read them. I did too. Fine. Just the correction I saw was that uh, uh, John Federico was not the presenter. That was Les Holgerson. I don't, and the other gentleman, I did not know that perhaps was him. Okay. But Les, Les Holgerson was That's making All the right. presentation, not John Federico. That. Thank you. 
Helps to know people then. I don't think I would have caught that. <laughs> John, you must have been logged in through that email because I think that's what popped up over the screen. Well, they, they first requested John to be there and then Les showed up. Oh, okay. So that's how that worked. But. Perfect. Well, I'm glad someone. Any other corrections or discussion on the minutes? There was, there was just a couple of things I picked up um, besides that. Kathy for inspection, if she's saying that what she's doing really is a witness, I would just put witness slash inspection, that just to be a little more accurate. Okay. And sometimes um, I was reading things like ad, admin, and then it said she, and the only question I had was she, and now I can't find it on the paper, but um, so just identifying people as to who she is. Okay. I had no idea reading it so just a couple edits for accuracy i can do that okay do we want to make a motion to accept these with edits as noted so moved i i seconded it but it's let's vote kathy from the top Yes. yes. Colleen? Yes. yes. Judy? Yep. Ben? Yes. And Kate is a yes. All right. So moved. Moving to the next item. I keep losing my agenda. <laughs> like it doesn't want to stay on top. All right. COVID-19 update for phase three. Uh, so pretty much we've just moved into phase three um, as of last week. Um, we haven't had any real problems in town, which has been great. We've had one complaint on Rietta, but it sounds like it was more of a personal, um, personal vendetta more than anything. Um, so I did just shoot off an email to John and Raylene just reminding um, that masks need to be to be worn, but out of the four weeks that they've been open, I've only gotten that one repeat phone call and it's complaining about the same person. Um, so like I said, at this point, I'm thinking that it's more than, it's personal. It's not anything more than that. Okay. Any other questions from the board on phase three or what all is entailed within phase three? Out of curiosity, I haven't been downtown for a while. I've been in my cocoon. <laughs> so, um, the your restaurants are they? How are they dividing? And, and have they opened up like the little breakfast shop down there? Um, have they opened up? And, and have you seen what their setup is? So they have their tables spaced apart. They have picnic tables outside as well. Uh, Pizza Palace has, I think it's only four tables available for people to sit in, six feet apart with um, plexiglass around the, between the customers and uh, the staff. Mm -hmm. um, I have not witnessed whether there's plexiglass at the diner. calls for a lot of creativity. That's for sure. <laughs> Anyone else? else? Discussion well, questions? As, as an afterthought, I'm curious as to why, or maybe it has in the last week, I haven't been home for a week, but why DCR is not lifeguarding Comic Con? providing lifeguards for Comet Pond. And if you go by there on a hot day, you're gonna see multiple cars, 30, 40 sometimes, which leads me to believe there's people up there not only swimming, but I mean, hopefully they have masks, but that would be a, a secondary concern if we're, we're having this beautiful beach with nobody able to access it because DCI is not putting personnel out there for lifeguarding or providing some type of alternative what method of, of control, if you will, because it seems like it 
it would be their responsibility. And I don't think as Board of Health, we should overlook it. Well, they did open the gate last week. Mm -hmm. So the gate is open from, I think, nine to five or something like that now. Good. So there's fewer cars on 68 parking, but um, on a hot, hot day, I'm sure that, especially on the weekend when people are home, we'll see a lot of people there. Um, I don't go there. I, I don't know. I just tell by the cars, you know, that there's a lot of people there sometimes. But now that I'm that? Home, it's hard to tell because you don't know how My many cars My husband has been going, right. so I can give you a current update. Excuse me? My husband has gone over to swim a couple times, so I can give you an update. Oh. So on Mondays and Tuesdays, there are no DCR guards, a guard there. But Wednesday through Sunday from noon to six, there is um, a uh, swim guard. Oh, good. I'm not saying the right word. Guard. And uh, people are sitting um, in their own group keeping distance, but it, he did comment to me that not there aren't masks all the time. Uh, but again, they are spaced out on the beach. And I took some kids up there myself, and that's exactly what I saw. They were really very quite a far, uh, far distance between each and every group and everybody was being, even in the water, they were being considerate not to get too close to one another. Exactly. Well, that's good. Like I said, I haven't been home for a week, so I'm, I was hoping that they had opened the beach up with lifeguard service. It's not Mondays and Tuesdays. Right. And there had been on the Hubbardson Town Forum website, some comments of folks complaining that the gates weren't open and, you know, why is the town not opening the gate? And a bunch of people were posting, it's not the town, it's DCR, here's the information, including myself. So I posted information and said, if you would like the gate open, you need to contact these people and content, let them know. And then within about a week or so, the gates were open. So it was kind of interesting. But yeah, they actually, in their documentation online, say that they don't provide lifeguard services like every day or consistently because of resources. So I think that's publicly noted and the public's aware. As long as people are being socially distant and practicing common sense outside, you know, I think, I think we're good. I think it's the best you can hope for when public spaces are reopening, which is going to be the case. All right. Anything else on phase three before we move on? All right, we're going to move into failed systems awaiting action on 10 Main Street. Yeah. I invited them to the meeting tonight again, um, and I swung in to Pizza Palace to see if I could meet up with Tula or anyone who's working there, but I guess the owners are out of town and won't be back now. It's the end of August. Tula is going to stop in and get the um, septic Title V loan program information, the packet of paperwork um, from me so that they can start getting the estimates um, in preparation for dad coming home to move forward with going through the Board of Health with a Title V loan. So that's where that is right now. Okay. So what's the timetable of? End of August, August. They're gonna, everyone will be home end, end of August? August. Yep. They're not gonna have the application until the end of August. Everyone, well, we need a signature from the owner and all that on the, on the application and they're not in, gonna be around, so. They live in Connecticut, if I'm not mistaken. Let's yeah, get they're, some... the mailbox on file where like the taxes and stuff go, go to Barry. Um, oh, okay. okay. But I think that they're physically not in Massachusetts. I think Kathy's right. So I'm also probably to going to be asking um, that <clears throat> the building commissioner is going to be doing some um, eventually doing multi-housing unit inspections. So um, I think we need confirmation of how many bedrooms are in those units because it sounds like there might be an apartment that we don't have record of. <laughs> um, 
which is putting strain on that already failing system. Um, Are we getting the septic reports that it's being pumped? Nope, I haven't gotten anything from Lawrence since our last ones. Which was February? A few months ago. Yeah, I think it was March. 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 So. Um, okay, I would, yeah. send them, I would send them a letter saying you're going to be fine if we don't get those reports and they don't get the application in because they've extended their time too long, too far. I would, I would make that a certified letter, Kathy. And I would yes. say that, that we're, we're giving them more leeway than we should be giving them. This is, this is unconscionable. They, now they're pushing over two years with a failed septic within a public water system supply. It just, I think we're just, and as for trouble here, but I don't think it's acceptable for us not to take some action against this. Right. It's oh, not, I mean, they've even transferred ago. ownership. Right. Two years they, ago, and they're aware of it. Too, I think it's not just a single family home, it's a three family home. And I think there I, might be more than three in there. I'm sorry? I think there might be more than three families. Well, whatever it is, it's still not sitting well with me. I think it, it's time we do something. Um, uh, certified letter and some consequences to not at least making an application. We've talked to them at least three or four months in a row about the situation. And they knew it when they bought the property. So, you know, something's got to be done. What happens if the well is contaminated? Have we had any well reports? from the public water supply? Is, is Paul Varney doing those tests? Or who does those tests? Are we getting copies of those tests, Mallory? He's supposed to be sending them to us every time he does one. Mallory, I don't think we can hear you. Yep, we lost we, Mallory. We, the tell her we lost contact again. Yeah, she dropped off. I can't tell her anything. Oh, okay. She'll probably dial back in, but I'm okay. keeping that. Yeah, I, I mean, I kind of agree. I think we need to be a little bit more aggressive with this one. I think we've given, we, they were aware of it when they bought the property. It shouldn't have transferred without being corrected. It did. Um, we've been really lenient, giving them time. You know, we asked them to come to the meetings several times in a row. They chose not to. And now, you know, they're, they're putting it off till after the vacation. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. Sorry. That's not a I agree right. with Ben. I agree with you. <laughs> and I agree with Ben. And, and I would say that once this starts to get fixed, if you can, the, the septic system, then I think they're going to be responsible for certifying that the well water is not contaminated, the public water supply is not contaminated. I don't think, I mean, considering the fact that that's the public water supply that supplies the school, I don't think we should ignore that. I agree. So, motion on next steps, and I'll take some notes to share with Mallory. Next we need to send a certified letter stating that we need the septic pumping records. We need their application in now. It is overdue. Um, if they don't get it to us in the next two weeks, that um, we will get a we will use our legal counsel to move forward on what other actions we can take. start getting the lawyers involved I think maybe they'll start complying yeah the other thing I think is assessing fines and we can and we will assess fines if we don't get information in the next two weeks ten business days I have a question um, this is the building across the street from the school, right? No. Yeah, yes, correct. And it correct. was the 
there used to be an old deli with a deli there? Yes. Okay. So how does that tie into the public, I mean, the um, school water supply? Oh, it's in 400 feet of the water, the well. Oh, okay. The configuration of Main Street in general, right? Being right. cramped and overlapped. Okay. So it does, it's 400 feet, so, okay. Kind of a stretch, is it? Um, I don't know that 400 feet is a stretch if we have, if we have evidence of a failed system that's been in failure for, yeah. no, for two years. Right. And there's not been consistent, from owner to owner, consistency in pumping. Um, yeah. You know, Got and even, yeah. even with pumping, right? I mean, mm -hmm. that has to be somewhere that that's all leaching. Is that a um, tight tank or is that on, is that on? I thought it was, I is, thought it was a bed, but I'm not sure. There were, um, what's the, uh, my, been a long time since I had to deal with any of this, but there, what's the other form of um, septic systems? It's not a leach field, not tight tank, sort of in between. It dumps into a, into like a hole of some sort. I believe this one has chamber tanks. systems. Pumping a tank. It has a pump, has what? I believe it has a tank because I believe that's what they're pumping. Okay, so it might be a tank tank. Because I know a lot of them on this main street are now on tank, uh, tight tanks. So. Would be worth looking at. I was just trying to pick up on the history, that's all. Yep, good point. And... All right, so we have an action on 10 Main Street. I'll take some notes and pass them along to Mallory for minutes and for action. And we're gonna move on to past Title Five Thirty One 31 Mount Jefferson Road. Um, Kathy, I don't know if Mallory prepped you on that one before the call or if you've had any discussions with her on it or if we need no, to table I that. No, I haven't. Um, okay. I will have to um, take a look at it and um, our engineer obviously reviewed it and said it was okay. So as long as uh, I get into the office within the next week and I'll sign off on it since it's a past test and that he's reviewed. Okay. And oh, one second, I have to let her back in. Um, why won't it let me do it? We have a call in listener, but it doesn't let me do anything. Sorry, I can see somebody like as an attendee, but I can't do anything to. Aha. Ha! I'm back. <laughs> I'm back. We lost internet. Sorry about that. <laughs> That's all right. So where are we? Um, so 10 Main Street, I have some notes to relay to you for okay. act, what, what our planned action is. And let's see. Do you want to just shoot them in an email over? I can. That'd probably be easier. We'll and then we had an open question on that in terms of the plan type. So I'll send that over. And then we were talking about 31 Jefferson Road. Kathy said she would pop in the office and be able to sign off on that in the next couple of days. Perfect. So now you are all caught up on those two. And the next Appreciate one is permits to be voted on. Food permit for William Homans. Sure. So Bill applied for his um, catering. catering business. Um, but he forgot to sign the permit. So I did call him and ask him just to swing in to sign it. Um, and he said he would do that. Um, but my question is for these new permits, especially the campground cauldron farm, um, we're gonna wanna see, I would assume a plan for a reopening, um, which we haven't received on either of them. The rules for campgrounds keep shifting from week to week. So yeah. 
This um, is that may <laughs> require some research as Definitely. to what he can do and what he can't do. But I, I think they're opening them, but they're opening them under some pretty strict guidelines. And this is a primitive campground. It's a, not even just an, a campground. Well, has anybody been to Lake Denison where you set up your little tents and then there's one, one giant bathroom shower area? No. That everybody shares and you cook over a pot over a fire. That's what, <laughs> well, that's what it is. It's primitive camping. Set up oh, your this tent. Is even, and, this is even more primitive. <laughs> so. I but, think um, that while the guidelines for campgrounds are in flux, that we have to let Bella know that she we can't approve her permit until we know what the guidelines are going to be right either that or we can approve her permit and just tell her she can't open until we have her um approved plan uh, approved plan that she's presented to the board of health well if the state guidelines are still in flux i don't want to approve anything yet Mallory, I don't know if you're talking, but it went very quiet. <laughs> I don't think so. No, I didn't think I said anything. Oh. <laughs> yeah, Sounds I mean, like it just needs a little more research and, yeah. and just to make sure that, again, all the teeth are crossed and all the I's are dotted. And she also has to change the application times if she wants overnights. She has to but that's just minor. That's just a minor application. All right. Any more discussion on the permits to be voted on? Um, the food permit. Um, my only comment is that we'll have to contact the Westminster Board of Health to do the inspection mm -hmm. um, because he's just been on the board this year. So I know he's not right this minute, but he has been, so I think that to um, be fair, his inspection should be done by the Westminster Board, which they agreed to. I've spoken with them. Come on. I would agree with that. Um, any other discussion? Do we need a, we don't need a vote on that particular piece, right? I don't think so, right? Because no. oh. it says vote in the in the agenda, it's throwing me off. All right, no installer per There are no installer permits, correct, Mallory? No, I thought one was coming, but we haven't gotten it yet, so I'll have to wait till next meeting. Okay, so open repairs and inspections, plans and review. The first of which is 59 Brigham Road. Yeah, so that one um, has already had, Matt has signed off on everything. Um, we just haven't had any. Um, I haven't gotten any calls on it. Their building permit is still in flux. Um, they're getting. Yeah, cutting out. Valerie, I don't know if you can hear us, but we cannot hear you. Um, can you hear me now? We can. Yes. Okay. So um, that's just one. Anyone that has. The project to start, I just kind of put that note next to it so we can keep a comprehensive list um, in our records of where things are and how things move so we can keep a time frame. Um, pretty much there's a couple of them that have been sent back from Matt to get some updates. Um, 87 Hill Road was rejected. I know he's working with the engineer on coming to some um, resolution on some issues they had um, in regards to the grade of the system. Mm -hmm. um, and seven Moosehorn Circle. Um, Kathy, have you been called out to look at that? Yeah. Um, 
um, they had their approved plans. Um, I know 31 Jordan Lane, Mark Popham and Matt have been working together um, along with the homeowner, Mr. Young. Um, they've been working together this week and hopefully we'll have Matt sign off by the end of the week. And I think the rest of them are just ready to rock and roll. I don't know if you've been called out to any of them, Kathy. I have not been reached um, or seen anything from 51 Root Road or Lot 2 Mount Jeff. Yeah. Um, 75 Barry, we're done with. Awesome. Uh, 106 Princeton, nope. Okay, so that's a new build, and I think that they are um, they're working with conservation right now, so it might be a little while before we hear anything on that one. Um, Bemis Road, oh, that's under Perks, never mind. Yep, yep. All right, so anything else on inspections and plans and review? Moving on to Perks, Crossroad. Kathy, um, that passed. Um, so now they're going to work on their plans. Um, Bemis Road, I've called, contacted Luke Roddy three times and not gotten any callbacks. Okay. So I haven't set anything up on that one yet. Kathy, the um, letterhead that, that came in from the envelope was the Worcester Diocese. Um, so I'll be curious to see what they're looking to put there. Right. I am too because it's um it's a small lot. Yeah. Excuse me, where was that again, please? It's it says um Bemis Road uh lot twenty one. Yeah. It's a zero point eight acre parcel. Um, Hale no, Road, Cruise Road, uh, and Dogwood. Um, I haven't heard anything from. Again, we're waiting on plans for all of those. Yeah, I haven't gotten any plans from any engineers on those yet. I'm sure they're coming though. Anything else on the perks? Nope. Moving on to open complaints, 111 Gardner Road, trash complaint. I've gotten nothing from the homeowners on any of these. So I. We lost you for a second, Mel. Bunch of building stuff on him. Um, in hopes to get as much accomplished with him as I could in a short time together. Um, but I have made Ryan aware, so hopefully we can start moving forward with maybe getting like a, like we said before, a task team assigned to it so we can get everyone on board and do a comprehensive inspection with um, whoever needs to go. Because there's a, I drove by and it looks like a multi multitude of issues to say the least. Where was that, Mallory? What address did you drive by? 248 Gardner Road. That's the one that we look like looks like um, the junkyard. Okay. So I think that needs to become a priority. Where are we going to schedule a site visit for that? Yeah, we're going to try to get like a team together. Right. So yeah, and that was on my list for Roland. Um, unfortunately, I only got him for a very short time today. Continue to work on putting together a task force to kind of address these things. Yeah. All right. Especially the one that has zoning. It looks like there's zoning, there's planning, there's, if we have a board for it, there's probably a violation involved. <laughs> so. All right. And um, no updated nurses report this. So we um, are still currently at zero. Mm -hmm. um, and I haven't had any contact with Sandy. Um, in a while, she, we haven't had to talk to each other, so. 
Okay. Yeah. Old business, food inspections. I'm sorry, we haven't gotten any more done. Um, last week, the uh, positivity rate for Hubbardston was 1.3%. Where is that information coming from? Yeah, because the state, the state comes from the state. Um, and they, they print, um, it's, a, it's a week out of date because they're always behind. But um, that's what um, I saw last week because I was looking for um, dates and all that other stuff of my own report to the other towns. And it was 1.3. We did have two active cases. They've both been taken off since, off the report since then. Um, it's been pretty close to zero in the area for a while. Even Gardner is less than 1%. Mm -hmm. In your surrounding towns, most, the three that I follow are at 0%. So, it's really been good for about three weeks now. Knock on wood. <laughs> Everyone. Okay, any other discussion on the nurse's report before I move on? I should have done that before, Judy, sorry. <laughs> it gets creeping towards eight o'clock and I'm falling asleep, so just yeah. to... <laughs> All right, moving to old business, food inspections. We have not progressed on food inspections. Um, honestly, I think the biggest difficulty is that at some point as a board, we decided to do two people at a food at every inspection. And it is incredibly difficult to coordinate schedules um, with just, you know, everything else. Um, you know, I don't know if the board wants to continue that. I don't have any issue or any fear of going out alone. You might be afraid of what I say to people, but we're not liable <laughs> for any of that, nor can we be held legally responsible if I happen to swear at somebody in the course of them yelling at me for no reason. However, I promise I will not do that. I will be my nicest, most professional self if I go it alone. Um, but I think we may have to uh, do that in order to get caught up. Yeah, I, I agree. It is hard to get the two of us together. Yeah. It's just tough. It's, I think part of it is our professions, right? So Kathy, being a farmer, has like all the time in the world, like at opposite times of when I do. <laughs> yeah, like, our schedules are completely opposite. Yeah, it's really tough. So, you know, um, so I'm happy to, you know, move forward on the open ones and reach out with you, Kathy, and I'll let you know when I'm doing them. And that way, if you happen to be available, um, you can just meet up with me at that time. Sure. And and I, I'm pretty sure also the practice has been to coordinate with the business owner. Um, I'm going to go during a reasonable hour of the day when I don't expect them to be super busy. And unless it's a private residence, I'm not going to necessarily call to confirm an appointment if it's a public space, like a public yeah, retail or, you know, if it's Mr. Mike's, for example, I'm just going to walk in and do it. So, yes. just so you know. Yep. Thank you. All right. Anything else on food inspections? Anybody else have anything to add? Let's see how kosher that is. Mm. Okay. Uh, recycle center. Yeah. So I included Bella's report to everyone. It looks like she had a pretty busy weekend. Um, I started getting some quotes for dumpsters to get down there a lot of the dumpster companies are looking for upwards of sixty dollars a mattress to remove the mattresses so i don't know how many we have down there um but i think at some point we need to definitely take a look at that where we're only charging twenty dollars and it was also brought to my attention that the price list that we have on our website is not necessarily what's being charged down at the recycling center we had someone take a television down and they looked online and I believe it was $10 on our brochure but then when they got there there was an option of small medium large for the televisions um, so that's something that we probably also should be taking a look at right I didn't know there was a difference on Me that neither. on the mattresses I stopped there today looks like there's about nine 
So at $60 a piece to remove them, we are in a shortfall. Yep. So we, I make a motion that if it costs us $60 to recycle them, that we have to start charging more. I'm not sure if we, if we take a little hit on each one rather than have them on the side of a road or in the woods somewhere. What does everybody think about $50 if we take a small hit on, on the recycling cost? Or if we take a small hit, it's going to stick us right. What, what, is, what is the charge now for each mattress? 20. And they're charging us 60? Yeah. Um, that's the average. Right. And so I, I, I don't know, it seems to me that it would only make sense to raise the price per mattress. But like you say, that's when they start showing up on the uh, side of the road, you know. Would we, before we start thinking about raising the price, would it be prudent to ask Bella to put together a revision on, on the price lists that are published so that we have something to go on and with her recommendations, or maybe then we could all have the list and make our own recommendations. I, I don't mind charging more. I'm just not sure we want to do a piecemeal. We should probably do it the whole, whole list of, uh, items to get it over with. That's a good idea, Van. So let's have Bella um, review those prices and, and make recommendations. And then we can publish the whole thing. Right, publish the whole thing, have her update the board down at the Recycle Center and the web all at the same time. Yep, mm -hmm. good plan. I think because I know Kate last time you talked about the um, kind of the if you brought down some scrap metal it took off some of your your bill for Bella too and I think that needs to be put in writing so it doesn't look like there's ever any favorites being played or anything like that. Yeah I, I would agree. So. Just list that as a stipulation. Yeah. Yep. Or I will reach yep. out to Bill tomorrow. Yeah I mean, honestly it can be written out um, on the online and on the the board even with you know whatever it, it's a little foldy board that goes inside note so it doesn't really stay out in the rain and the weather it could also it could be something that the the prices could be updated and something like that could just be like a hey we're awesome we're doing this as a favor for you special kind of sure you know, it could be written down and on a nice bright piece of paper so people note it but it was a it was pretty interesting. It, I thought it was an interesting way to get people to, to, you know, bring more stuff, which is kind of the goal, right? Right. And it's, it's that fine line. You always want to incentivize people to use the service so that more is going into recycling and less is going into, you know, the woods and the trail systems. But at the same time, you want to be able to cover your costs. So fine line. Very fine. And electricity update? Okay, so I went to um, the recycling center. I spoke with Travis this afternoon, and I intend to try one last time reaching out to National Grid in general customer service, not the contact information that Mallory gave me, because that person has refused us and refused Ryan and refused Travis. Um, as to get connecting the line to the pole. The pole that is there that we want to connect to is has a um, dust to dawn light on it that is paid for by the DPW. My approach will be to take the DPW's account number and contact them as a customer saying, we have a loose wire, we want an electrician to come out and please connect the wire so that, that to that um, pole and light, simply because we have run a, um, an outlet 
at a shed. And I'm going to, if that doesn't work, I like Travis's suggestion that we get a generator and just generate our own electricity in the future if needed. That would be the most economical way to have electricity at the recycling center if we can't get hooked up to the pole. So I'm going to call National Grid tomorrow and once I have the account number and make that simple request. And if that doesn't work, then um, I will come back to the board to ask for um, a generator cost to be uh, spent so that we have electricity there. Any questions from the board? Sounds good. Let's hope it works. Yeah. Hey, I, have a, I, I have a question on Bella's report here. I, I don't know, maybe, maybe I missed something here, but how come we don't have a trash dumpster there? I don't think we've been able to get a dumpster because they've been unavailable. Yeah. We got a quote from E.L. Harvey. Um, I sent it over and that was the six, one of the $60. I spoke with Manadnock. Um, as well. I know we used EL Harvey in the past and we requested this fall that they take their dumpster based on the issues we had with billing last year. So we're trying to get one. Um, but we just so where's all the trash going? I think Travis, does Travis have some containers down there that you guys are putting metal and stuff in? Yeah, there are, there are open, there's an open container for, mm -hmm. for scrap metal. There isn't necessarily trash collected. There's a place to collect oil. There's a place for collecting electronics. There's a place for like free items that are reusable that people can kind of take. And then scrap metal and mattresses. I think the mattress dumpster being gone has been kind of the biggest pain point. Right. There isn't necessarily other refuse or trash that's dropped off there. Then, then why, did, why did she reference that? to it I, I mean if they're not if there's no trash going there right I think she throws in like if she gets any upholstered items and the um, dumpsters I mean I'm sorry the mattresses um, oh but from my understanding that's the only thing that they're used for except for yeah. if Travis has some items to get rid of I know he because um, he asked me too if we were going to be getting one and I told him we're working on it okay Okay, no, I just wanted because Yeah, cause... good question. Yeah, that was the only thing I saw when I was there was the mattresses. I mean, there was a lot of random stuff, but not necessarily trash trash. Although it was a temporary measure, um, Kathy did donate her unused residential bins. So there are a couple of small bins if there happen to be you know, a bag of trash or something left there. And then I included her time card, which she put in for six hours. So we just have to, if that's okay, I'll get her paid on time. The pay period that goes in this week or next week, I'm sorry. Yes, um, I can sign off on that in the next couple days. Okay, awesome. And Kathy, Ryan did give me um, capability to do DocuSign, so instead of it coming from Ryan, if anything needs to be DocuSigned, it will come from me. Okay. Just so okay. you're aware it's not uh, spam or anything, it's going to come. And I'll let you know before I send anything. Okay, that sounds good. So then, perfect. Kate? Sorry, you, you, you did new business. 
Can we move on to new business budget spreadsheet? Yep. Um, so the only thing I have for you is I submitted the turnover, um, which didn't really have much. And then we got an invoice for Bob Meager, who does the mowing down at the landfill. So I just need permission to pay him, please. Yes, he does that about twice a year. What does he usually do in the fall and then spring? Yeah. Okay. Does that, and that gets paid from our revolver, correct? Correct. Okay. So Any we're paying the mold landfill too? Well, we have to maintain it. We get some sheep down there or something? Goats. <laughs> he does a good job. He does a, a fair job and his price is reasonable. I question anything, just trying to make the point. Oh, I know. We could put some sheep up there like Lemonster did. That'd be kind of cool. All right. Any, any other discussion on that particular item before we move on? All right. Casella organic letter. That came in multiple parts. Did everyone get a chance to read I'm sorry. It was so big. Oh, it's fine. <laughs> Um, so I wasn't around for any of this to start with, um, but I was, I got this letter from Mass DEP requesting um, that the town board of health in which the owner operators facility is located, which it sounds like is us, um, give a letter to DEP in regards to the um, regulations for a land application of slub, sludge and septage on 38 Root Road. Yep. Um, so this is a the second time that um, Sawyer Farm has done this. Okay. Um, and um, Ray told me that he was not pleased with how they did the first job, um, but has tightened up on the um, finishing part of the job for this new area. It is in a proper location uh, on the farm. Um, I looked at the um, tests that they did, the environmental tests, and everything is below whatever parts per million that's required on all the possible chemicals that could be in it. Uh, so it should be okay to do. So is there like a, did Kelly send out a form letter before giving permission or? Um, basically we have to take a vote that we have reviewed the Casella organic uh, project at the Sawyer farm. And then you type up a letter that states the date that we reviewed it. And um, I guess they're asking for official approval. Is that right? That's what it sounds like. Yeah. Yep. Um, that as long as they are following the state guidelines as listed, that we would approve the project at the Sawyer Farm. Well, I have a couple of comments I'd like to bring up first. We have a general bylaw, Chapter 28, that defines the soil importation into the town. And they list, that bylaw lists the prohibited contents and I would like to have either DEP or Casella or a, perhaps even a third party would be best to certify that none of those soils are going to be deposited with this. Now, I'm not against this process. We've used it before. It's been very successful with some other farms and, and uh, projects in town. But those were before we had this bylaw. I think it's only prudent that we have some certification that we're not bringing the types of soils that we have prohibited into town 
And I think the only way we can get that done is if they certify that the soils that are outlined in the bylaw are not contained in the sludge that's going to be brought in. So either Casella or their third, pa third party, or we could even hire our own engineer, I guess, to interpret and it's specified in the bylaw with the, uh, the soils listed by number. So I don't know exactly what they are. So it's hard for me to tell from the, the report that we got whether or not they're coming in or not. But I think somebody needs to specify that they're before we should bring this in. And I suspect it's not there, but I think that's, that's the only way that anybody's going to have any ability to check and make sure it doesn't happen. And I, and I quite frankly don't think the DEP should be the ones to certify that because when we were going through the issue of bringing in the soils from Boston, the, the contaminated soil from Boston, the DEP was in favor of it and they thought that that soil was okay. They had all kinds of ways to to say that that was fine to be brought in and we just didn't believe him. And subsequently we had this, this bylaw that prohibits those specifics. I think we need a third party to verify that none of these soils are being brought into town. That's right. You're reminding me that uh, on the previous one, I was it, it might've been Mark Popham we had review the whole document. Mallory is he's the one that's qualified, correct? He's a yeah, he's a civil engineer and he has all of his soil evaluators and everything. Right. So will you ask him to review it uh with the information that Ben gave us on the types of soils not allowed per our bylaw? Yep. Um yeah. Thank you for I almost forgot that step, Ben. That's a good point. <laughs> in 2018 prior to the passing of the bylaw also. So that, you know, we've had no, no harm, no foul yet. And right. all, but we don't know. Now right. that we have the bylaw in place, we have yeah. a standard that we can measure against. Yeah, and I think we had that passed as well because um, of these Casella projects and, and um, I believe Mark reviewed the last project, Casella project that went through. Was that like 2018, you think? Uh, um, well, the, the last project was dated 2018. Okay. That, uh, that second addendum you sent me, uh, pages like 35 to 78 or something, was dated 2018. I think that was the last application. And, and that was early in 2018 prior to the bylaw. Okay. Uh, and then last year, I happened to be at a planning board hearing on I'm sorry, I don't remember the property, but there was a large contingent present who was, who were complaining and concerned about the odors. Now, that's why I asked you for that. I think it's section D of the amendment. They do have an odor policy in place for that. Okay. If I, think, I think the most vociferous person in the audience that was complaining about the odors came from that root road area. Correct. So, That's one of the it. things that um, Ray Sawyer is not going to allow the company to do is um, they didn't complete the project in a timely manner. And that so caused the problem of the grass not getting seeded in in time for it to start growing and prevent any odors. Yep, that's one of his criticisms, but yet he wants to go forward because he wants to improve the soil that he's having this project done on. Um, I know because we had a conversation and um, the soil that's there is is 
mostly rock. So he's trying to build up the soils. Okay, so, uh, so in addition to what... Mark Popham review this and make sure it's okay. Well, in addition to his review, in, in addition to his concerns about the odor, that should come at the expense of the applicant, also right. known as Casella. We should not be paying for those reports. Correct. And we, we have the ability to pass that expense on. So the third party report on the contents of the soil should be borne by the applicant or Casella, as well as the, the monitoring of the policy. And, and if Ray is getting stuck in the middle of that, that's not fair to Ray, and it's certainly not fair to the town or the residents up there. So there should be some type of, of uh, action plan so that Casella is gonna be responsible for the monitoring and making sure that it doesn't happen. Certainly not our responsibility, you know, we, we, we don't have to pay for that. Who paid for it last time, do we know? Uh, from it Mark doesn't Martin. matter, Mallory. We, you know, we have the ability to transfer those fees to the applicant. Mm -hmm. Right. Attorney fees, engineering fees, consultation fees, and if we want, we could hire our own consul consultant for that. I mean, in, in the context of not just asking for a report, but, you know, we've had uh, places associates in the past work the consultant, I believe, there for the conservation committee as well as the planning board to make sure that all of this stuff goes down the way it should go down. And they're, they're quite good. They're very diligent and they monitor the thing and they do a good job for the town. And I'm not saying Mark doesn't. Mark Popham's also a nice job but we've never used him in the context of a, a consultant. And it, and it goes a little bit beyond just the report. You know, there's a certain investment into what you're doing when, you, when you're looking at something in the uh, context of a professional consultant for a reason, being hired for us. He works for us in that case, and he's paid for by the app. If you have the names that were used by the planning board, um, we can certainly contact them as well. Yeah, I'd be happy to do that. Let that Oops. information come to Mallory, and then we'll, Mallory, you can reach out to them and to Mark Popham, and we'll see where it goes. Yeah, and as I said, I'm not against this program. I think it's done it's done very well up on Gardner Road. It's I believe they were going to do it on the Catisto pit. Um, one of the maybe that was the public hearing was the Catisto pit where they were having the objection. But I, if anybody wanted to go back on YouTube and look at that meeting, there were some legitimate concerns brought up. Uh, I think that there's only one way to for us to be sure of it is have some professional there and monitor it and make sure it happens. Yep, I agree. So this is Kate, I have a question. So I'm not very familiar with this. I'm reading, I'm following along. And one of the things that occurs to me is that we're being asked for either con con concurrence or written notice to the contrary within 35 days. Mm -hmm. So I'm assuming we're going to supply written notice to the contrary asking for further evaluation of the soil based on our bylaw and then take the necessary steps in the board to secure those experts? That sounds good. Okay. Just want to make sure I was understanding and following everything. This one's new to me. No, I think we're getting this, you know, only 30 day notice. We get halfway through the 30 days. So I would say that we may have to put that in the context that we need more time, absolutely. Right, or, or at least give written notice outlining yeah. what we've discussed here in terms of we, what we would like to see happen and, you know, et cetera. Well, it, it could be in the sense of a contingency approval subject to the review of a third party engineer ascertaining that none of the prohibited items and the bylaw are going to be contained in the material that's going to be deposited. Yep. 
I think that sounds reasonable. Yep, that's reasonable. Did you get that, Mallory? I did. Okay. Um, do, we need, do we need an actual motion on that, Kathy? I believe we do, right? For We yes. should, yes. Would you like to verbalize that as a motion, Vin? I'll try. It's, uh, <laughs> Give it a so shot. Term memory isn't what it used to be. I'll move that we um, make our approval subject to the third a third party certification that none of the elements contained in our chapter 28 general bylaw will be imported into the town and that there is a monitoring program in place for the odor policies. Do we have a second on the motion? I second. All right. All in favor from the top, Kathy? Yes. Colleen? Yes. Judy? Yep. Ben? Yes. And Kate is a yes. All right, Mallory, any questions before we move on? I think I'm good right now, but thank you. All right. Oh, excuse me, before we move on to that, I also read in that report, they have a transportation plan, but they didn't mention it in the report. I didn't see it on how that material is brought to the farm. It's, I saw it in there, it's in there. It's Goulet Trucking at yes. the South Deerfield. I saw that, but they okay. didn't say how or where, what the route was, I should say. Oh, you want to. All they say is the route will be determined between two parties listed in the letter. Right. Yeah. They do say that. Well, I think, you know, after following a couple of those trucks taking the material to the Jordan farm in Rutland as they go through Holden, that, that, that you know, let them come down out of Templeton in the back way and go down Route Road that way. But I don't want them going downtown Hubbardston with that load of stuff. That's pretty nasty stuff. And uh, boy, I'll tell you, you get that odor in your car, you can't get it out. <laughs> so I think we, we need to be looking at the transportation plan, the route that they're going to bring that stuff down, which, was, which would be part of the odor policy, I guess. I agree. Okay, so maybe we want to also stipulate that they identify the routes as part of that order plan. That'd be good. Okay. Is everybody in acceptance of that proposed amendment to motion made? Yes. And one other thing, do we want to do we want to ask them about the the quantity of trucks, how many trucks are coming coming in and out on a daily basis, and when they're going to be bringing in and out? Uh, they say during normal hours of operation. We could probably ask them to define that. I, th I think the number of trucks. Um, if we if you think if you step back on that one a little bit, and we think about the more trucks, the better because the quicker it would be done and the less chance for odor, leakage, et cetera, et cetera. Um, flip side being the more trucks, the more usage on the roads, et cetera. But what's the difference between 10 trucks coming once and one truck coming 10 times? Well, it's, it's wear and tear in the roads it, and it's also potential for a, an accident that would cause some type of spill more than anything. We had that situation when we reviewed the gravel permit on uh, Pitchettville Road. And I don't think we need to, to do it or to request it in such a, an extent that we did on Pitchettville Road, but the residents were upset about the fact of 150 truck loads a day going by their homes. And if that's, that's a situation, I think we need to take a look at it. That's a lot of trucks, not 75 trucks a day going one way, times two because they have to come back. So it could be a concern if you're on the road that they're traveling. I 
I was just thinking about the, your um, desire to have them come down through Templeton, down to Root, Root, Root Road from Templeton. That's going to be a rough road for them if, if they really follow through on that particular idea. So I don't know. I think I'm it's asking them what, what their plan of action is. Yeah. It can't be any worse than Williamsville Road. <laughs> we I can't remember in, what they did for the first project. Um, but there were no complaints with the first project. With well, that's good. I mean, they may have gone up Thompson Road and, you know, come down um, the old Barry Templeton Road. Yeah, what's the name of it now? Williamsville Road. They may have come down that way. I don't know. But I think we ought to have that information. All right, then could you, do we want to put together an amendment to the motion? So I'll I'm not thinking that it has to be an amendment. I just, just make it, you know, a request that they provide the routes and information on how many, how many trucks, trucks they anticipate. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Per day. Yep, that sounds like a fair request. You know, um, because I live right on Gardner Road, um, I'm reminded of the fact that there's a lot of construction going on right now on this road. And I'm wondering if that would also affect that project if they're coming from the south and coming north with the trucks or wherever. Um, if, if that would affect their route. I don't know how long this is going to go on, but I'm thinking it's probably going to be a lot, mo most of the summer by the looks of it. Well, if they're going to come out of Irving Paper Mill, they're going to come east on Route 2 and then take one of the roads south, either um, Route 68 or the, or the Barry Templeton Road or possibly Old Templeton, um, or New Templeton, whatever that road is. But those are the only, other, other than Root Road, those are the only three roads they could come down on. From Correct. Earth. They, wouldn't well, come south. they wouldn't come from the south. The reason why I said it was because they have a lot of detours going over those roads already sometimes, so. Yeah, but the way it's written, it doesn't look like it's going to start. I mean, we have, we're waiting on them to come back with information and all that other stuff. So it doesn't even look like it will start for another month. Right. Oh, at least, yeah. Maybe longer. Right. And according to their documentation, they like to spread it in the cooler months rather than the summer. So they may not be planning on bringing it down to the fall anyway. The, it keeps the odors down when there's when it's cooler. Okay. Any more discussion on the topic before we move on? Mallory, do you have everything you need from your perspective? I'm guessing that's a yes because we can't hear you. Yep. I cut out. <laughs> Silence is acquiescence. I'm moving on. Thank All right. You. The next item on the agenda is triple E. Right. So just making everyone aware that there was a positive case of triple E in orange. Um, I asked Ryan to get some information out on the um, social media and it looks like he did. Um, so just keep an eye on that and um, continue to update as needed to the residents. Yeah, that's a good posting on social media. That makes a lot of sense. Any other questions or comments on the AAA? All right, Brietta Ranch. So I just wanted to reiterate, I got that one complaint um, in regards to one specific person not wearing a mask. Um, it's come to me twice now from the same person who still cho chooses to go 
um, every week that it's been open and still chooses to take it upon himself to confront the same person. Um, so I have brought it to the chief of police's attention um, and I advised the caller that if he's not comfortable, then he, at the time that he notices someone's not wearing a mask, needs to um, speak to someone who's working there, someone who's in charge, because we did have the um, plan in place with John and Raylene. Um, and he just needs to report it to an appropriate person at the appropriate time. And if he doesn't feel comfortable, instead of approaching someone and escalating, it needs to probably be the best stance to just back down for and not go. <laughs> is, it, so. is it like a customer that's not wearing a mask or is it somebody that actually works it's there? Two customers who uh, like to purchase records. So isn't, isn't the, um, isn't the, the rule that if you're outside and you're safely six feet away from people that you really don't need a mask? So if that's the case. It sounds like that people are getting in each other's faces, but I don't, like, again, it's just one person side we're getting, and it sounds like it's more of a personal because yeah, you buy the same thing I buy, you got there before me, you don't have your mask on, blah, 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 blah. blah. Well, then so that, like, well, d well, don't approach that person and say, hey, you know, you, don't, you need a mask. You're, you're not six feet away from me because then right. that's and has put themselves in front of you and now no you're not six feet away because you've approached me <laughs> spoken with chief parent about it we're on the same page um and like i said to him it's voluntary that you, it's a volu you're not going there no one's forcing you right. so if you're not comfortable then the best stance would be to not attend yep that's right stick to yards yeah there's plenty of people selling stuff online right now, so. Yeah. Bring your own personal wipes and wipe down your records that you want to buy. There you go. I'll tell them that next time. I'm sure I have another call <laughs> coming on it, so. <laughs> um, and then under unexpected subjects, I just have, I have one personal thing personally. Um, I've gotten a few calls in the past week or so about needle disposal, um, sharps. Um, and I was just looking to get a little bit more information on the board as to, I know we do not have a kiosk um, where sharps can be disposed of. And I was just wondering kind of if we did before, why we don't have one now. Um, I know MPHN offers the service. Um, just trying to That's always been a problem where you dispose of syringes, you know, diabetic syringes, et cetera. Um, for a while, the EMS was taking them in because then they could get take them over to the hospital. Yeah. Um, you go with a kiosk, and it was, um, it can be expensive. And I think that was the reason why it wasn't pursued because of the expense. Okay. Um, the hospital will not take them because they have their own issues. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was sort of going in the back door. I know when I was working that, you know, if we had somebody that was on hormones, you know, I would take their collection of needles and syringes and I would dispose them at my hospital where I was working. But, um, Again, that's the same thing as EMS being doing a courtesy thing of taking it with them when they go over um, and dispose of their own needles at the hospital. Sure. So it was a courtesy thing that you know folks did, and um, I don't know what the solution is, um, but I do know the reason why the kiosk wasn't pursued was because it was a little bit on the expensive side. Perfect. Okay. And I know that the state guidelines are, you know, the diabetic insulin needles can be put into a safe container, such as the laundry jug or any of that good stuff it needs to be written across so that it's sharps inside. Um, but I just want to be able to have an explanation for when people call. <laughs> um, other than I really am not sure. So. That's all that I had. 
Any other topics? Yes. Um, we were going to think about um, if we were going to get a uh, thank you gift for Bill Holmans uh, for having served on the board. Um, my only idea is to perhaps get him a $40 gas card uh, that he could use um, because he has gone out on inspections for three years and um, not reimbursed for any of that. So I thought maybe a $40 gas card would be a, a nice little gift to say thank you. I, I think that's a great idea because I talked to his sister last week and um, he doesn't, you know, like they go out to eat once in a while and he doesn't really have any hobbies because he has the farm and everything. And so she really, she really didn't have any ideas except for like a restaurant card or something. But I think the gas card is a great idea, especially since he did, you know, use gas to do all these inspections around town. I, I think that's, that's a really good idea, Kathy. Thanks. I'll second a motion if you're gonna make it. Okay, I make a motion that we get um, a $40 gas card to say thank you to Bill Holmans for his time and um, all his, all the things that he contributed to the Board of Health during his three years. Ben, officially second. 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 All right, vote from the top, Kathy. Yes. Colleen. Yes. Judy. Abstain. I'm new on the board. <laughs> okay. Uh, ben? Yes. And Kate, yes. yes. Any other topics? Eight? No. All right. <laughs> Hearing none. <laughs> well, before, we, before we do say goodbye to that, on that particular subject, maybe we ought to just check the appropriateness of where those funds come from. I'm certainly not opposed to contributing, but I'm not sure the, that type of gift should come from public funds from the board. I, that would be my only reservation. Right. If it's, if it's okay with town administrator or whoever you want to check it with, but. Um, if it's not, I will contribute as yeah. well. Yeah. yeah, I'll contribute from my personal funds. Yep. Kathy, wanna... Venmo, PayPal, or a check? Or Zelle? Um, Kathy, how many of those do you know? <laughs> huh, check. <laughs> we'll use it from our personal funds. I just thought that we would give him something. That's what I was Yeah, that's saying. fine. I just I don't want to have it. anybody come back at us and say, and yes. I don't. I wasn't really thinking about taking it out of the town funds. Oh, okay. Well, that's great. That's fine. Nope, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Any other topics or subjects, unexpected or otherwise? <sighs> Silence is acquiescence. I'll take a motion. Or I'll make a motion to close the meeting at 8.40 p.m. Second. So moved. 